This isn't a touring bike. Hey, good morning. Anonymous Biker USA, welcome back. First time here, consider subscribing. Hit that thumbs up, smash the like, share it out. And here we are on the 2021 Honda Goldwing DCT Non Tour. And why do I emphasize Non Tour? Well, all of the videos I've done in the Goldwing, the last four or five, we are approaching in excess of 150,000 views. So obviously, it's a hot topic. And let's get out of the traffic here. Gotta love the acceleration of the wing. A lot of the comments from the videos some of them filled with vitriol, some of them just being funny. But a lot of people said, this isn't a touring bike. It's in the classification of a sport tourer. And I thought, hmm, is it? So obviously the Goldwing has the tour version, which has the tour pack and a lot of different rider aids and adjustable suspension and on and on and on and on and floorboards but is that the only difference between the touring version and the non-tour which is this is a bagger so is it a sport tour i ask you what you think so I dug in a little deeper on the sport touring market and there's manufacturers that offer different bikes obviously in that classification but the big three that I came away that most people see are the Yamaha FJR 1300 the Kawasaki Concours 14 which from what I was reading is no longer going to be in production which just means they're coming out with a newer version of it and they're going to update it because I think that model had been in production for 20 plus years. So they'll probably come out with a new variation of it. Uh, and then you have Yamaha has the Tracer 9 GT Plus. And then you go with BMW like the RT1250R or the RT1250RT, which is funny because sport and touring right the rs and the rt but what delineates them from being a tour bike versus sport touring is it just semantics well let's talk about it now i got on tons of yamaha forums goldwing forums bmw forums to see if people have ridden them all and compared them and for video's sake here i have ridden the bmw RT 1250 RT and RS. Uh, I have not ridden the FJR 1300. I have not ridden the Tracer GT9 Plus. And the Kawasaki Concours, I have not ridden. Sat on it, never rode it. And then I have the Z900, which is sport naked. So, obviously, with the sport touring, you're combining sporty and touring, right? Triumph used to have the 1050, I think it was called the Sprint, the 1050 Sprint TT or something like that. And sitting on this gold wing, you know, I'm upright, but my feet are not forward. My feet are underneath me, more like mid controls, which is more like the sport touring bikes. This has pegs, not floorboards, Look, sort of like the sport touring bikes. This has panniers and no rear case, just like the sport touring bikes. That dog didn't like the gold wing. Ha! Vote a fan for sport touring. <laughs> uh, but with that being said, just like this non-tour DCT, those sport touring classes also have tour packs that you can put on and detach. 
so then does that make them a non-sport touring at that point and just a touring bike i mean it gets in the weeds right so with the sport touring bikes obviously they seem to be a lot more sporty position a little more lean forward feet underneath of you kind of like this although you are a little more upright on this than the sport touring and I think the biggest difference in all the forums, it seems to be with two up riding. The sport touring is perfect for solo riding, whereas the Goldwing tour version is the mecca of two up riding. Now, I don't do a whole lot of two up riding, and I've never done two up riding on my DCT. Uh, I find this great as a solo rider. So. A little confused what do you think in the comments below i mean i want to ride the fjr 1300 um they all seem to have more horsepower more torque uh and most of them are about 200 pounds lighter than the goldwing tour and the dct non-tour so they're more horsepower more torque lighter smaller profile right they have less raked out shorter wheelbase which gives it that sportier handling and as you know the goldwing is long so that's why this thing is great and planted on the highway i mean this thing will go all day long on the highway right so those sport touring bikes obviously mimic the sport part of it with having those shorter wheelbases little less length so they have better handling more nimble now here's where i debate i've had this goldwing on some major technical roads you can go back and look at those videos and because this has ride modes with sport touring rain and eco i put this in sport mode in those particular riding situations and i find this bike to be super nimble super responsive and super agile now i've ridden that bmw rt1250 and that's super nimble super agile did i find it more so than this <sighs> splitting hairs i really don't know kind of like splitting hairs between touring and sport touring it just seems that the overall resounding difference is two up versus solo riding two up all of the forums are like goldwing 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 and most of the forums yamaha honda uh, even suzuki because they have that uh, gxs or whatever it's called they all said solo riding sport tour all day long two up riding nobody beats the goldwing all opinions but what do you think in the comments below is the Goldwing non-tour DCT more of a sport tour than a touring bike? Now, I hear all the groms, doesn't matter, just ride it. It's very true. I mean, you can take a Sportster 883, throw some bags on it, and tour across the country, right? It comes down to what you can handle. So then we get into comfort. Obviously, this thing is a road sofa, like the Saddleman Road Sofa LS seat. This thing is supremely comfortable you can be on it for 8 10 12 hours in a day if you had to and i looked at those forums for comfort with the yamaha fdr 1300 the kawasaki concours and they all said after a seat change they were on those bikes 8 10 12 hours a day now with some of those bikes like the yamaha fgr 1300 the handlebars are adjustable for three different riding positions so you can go almost like sporty to comfort so from upright to where i am now some of them have adjustable foot positions now tells me they're kind of the tweeners between sport and touring world right so you see i don't really know if there's much difference other than obviously the weight of the bike and the seating position yes they are big and they will make them feel faster because lighter with more horsepower more torque obviously bike's going to move way faster this is 800 plus pounds 124 horsepower 
put in sport mode moves good but you get on that let's say you get on the FGR 1300 as 146 horsepower at 600 and something pounds well, obviously it's gonna move a lot faster it's gonna feel like a rocket so I don't have an answer I'm not I'm not an expert on all this sport touring touring who cares just go right but for the sake of the video what do you all think on the differences and did they just create this class to sell more bikes right profit that's what it's all about touring versus sport touring now on the sport touring bikes yeah they're going to be different suspension so it's going to give you some stiffer ride and a lot of those have adjustable adjustable suspension Goldwing has navigation a lot of those sport touring bikes don't have navigation not a big deal you use your phone right although the Yamaha Tracer GT Plus which is 2024 that has a Garmin navigation interface so now we're really getting intertwined now the look of that bike is nothing like this bike so, I mean, you look at the FJR 1300 and the BMW 1250 RTRS, they have similar looks, right? Because they're in sport touring. That Yamaha Tracer GT Plus, eh, kind of looks more like a Kawasaki Versus. So, is that a sport touring bike? And the Concourse is like a mix between the Ninja and a. Uh, Kawasaki touring bikes, right? Sport touring. Now, I had the Kawasaki Vulcan Voyager 1700. Great bike. But well, that was heavy. Rode great, but it was heavy. This bike is 800 and some pounds. Rides great. I don't feel the weight because the center of gravity is so low. On the forums, a lot of the FJR owners, a lot of the Kawasaki Concours, they all said it has a high center of gravity. So, weight distribution is definitely going to affect how you handle the bike i mean this being so low because it's heavy man this thing just goes especially in sport mode are those the same i mean i see people ripping up and down on fjrs and handling them like sport bikes hence sport touring so a lot of people were saying that's a sport touring that's a sport touring the, the goldwing non-tour I'm not saying it's not. Honda doesn't say it is. I looked on the website, and this is just classified as a touring model because it is a miles eater. But should we reclassify them? And anything that doesn't have a tour pack be more sport touring, and anything with a tour pack be a touring bike? I mean, that goes for everything. All right, your Harleys, your Indians, insert name here. And I, I just thought so many comments, that's sport touring, that's sport touring, that's sport touring. I'm like, ah, let me see what you all think, because a lot of you watch the Goldwing videos. And again, I don't care what it's called. It's a great bike, and it's a lot of fun. Now, I could see if you have trouble holding up a heavier bike and you want to downsize, or you're just looking for something a little easier to handle because the weight shaves off like 200 pounds going to those other models. Eh, it makes sense. Uh, but this Goldwing DCT non-tour is pretty awesome. And I love that it has the navigation built in. Um, price point also. You know, that's a big, 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 big thing. So these now, the 2024 models are going, let's just call it even, not no tax tag title, just MSRP, 25000 the Yamaha JR 2024s, they were like, I think they are like 18 and a half somewhere in there. And the BMW is going to be north of that. Uh, and then you got the BMW with the maintenance and that expense. So you get into reliability. Obviously, everybody knows Honda's amazing. Uh, BMW, a lot of people love those bikes, but they complain about the maintenance and the cost. The Yamaha, FJR, and the Kawasaki, all you hear is mega reliable, change the oil, put 100,000 miles on it, and call it a day. 
And I would have to agree with that. Having owned Kawasaki's, owned Hondas, haven't owned a Yamaha, um, haven't owned a BMW, but ridden plenty. And that's always a common theme with the BMW is the maintenance and the cost associated with that. So, sport touring versus touring seems to be a debate. I could care less either way. Uh, you call this bike whatever you want. Heck, a lot of people just say I ride a scooter. That's a scooter you're riding. That's not a motorcycle. I don't even care. It's a great scooter. It matters not to me. One thing it doesn't do is stay in the garage and not get ridden. So those who are watching the video in the garage, washing your bike and never take it out and tell me it's a scooter, go ride yours. Go ahead, go ride it. Scooters aren't bad either. Did you ever ride one? They're fun. Probably not. So I'm sure there's some differences that I'm missing. Like I said, not an expert on the market, but topic of conversation because it came up so much in the comments about sport touring. And I'm not gonna say they don't have a point because how sport touring is classified, minus the weight here, is really the only major difference. Um, because you put this in sport mode, man, the suspension is good, the handling is good, reliable, nimble, quick. It's just 800 plus pounds. So uh, to me, the Goldwing Nontour DCT and the FJR and the Concours, they're a lot lighter, more horsepower, more torque. But handling and everything, I mean, this handles pretty good. I have zero complaints about this on any roads. Now, highway, that would be interesting. This thing on the highway is amazing. Those bikes on the highway, some forms are like minimal wind, it's awesome. Nothing blocks wind like the Goldwing. However, the, the Yamaha and the Kawasaki, they block wind well, just not as good. Um, and then they say they feel planted on the road, not as planted as the Goldwing. Again, that comes down to the extra weight, right? So, I mean, they're pretty minimal splitting hairs from what I can see. But those of you that have owned them and ridden them, compared them and all that stuff, let me know. Because I saw a lot of those comments too. And a lot of people just kept coming back to if you're solo riding, sport touring all day long if you're two up riding goldwing all day long uh and even the passengers have said that they love two up on the uh on the goldwing but not so much on the fjr or the kawasaki so go look at the at the yamaha 9 gt plus the tracer it doesn't look anything like those other bikes i'm not really a fan of the look but utilitarian wise probably is a great sport tour I, i'd be more of the fjr 1300 and the kawasaki concours and and see um you're definitely getting in at a much i mean that the yamaha tracer 2024 is like 16,000 or 17,000, and you get a lot for that so 25 for this versus you know sub 20 for the for the yamahas and you're probably, what, like 24 for that BMW? So at that point, I mean, do you just get the Goldwing? I mean, then you can go into the K1600 series, too. So, I mean, you get real nitty-gritty here, and you can get in the weeds, obviously. But I'm just curious as to if you look at this Goldwing non-tour DCT, you think Goldwing, you think touring, or do you think eh, it's a, more of a sport touring bike? No right or wrong answers. Technically, Honda classifies this as a touring bike. But I'm sure if they put sport touring next to it, it probably wouldn't get a lot of pushback. And a lot of those other, uh, they have adjustable windscreens as well. Let's take a ride over the 
oh, top of the dam here. Take a look at Lake Lanier on this Sunday morning. Somebody out on the boat fishing. I mean, this gold wing, <laughs> every time I ride it, it just reminds me how good it is. Need to get on that FJR and see what that's about. And if Kawasaki does come out with the new Concourse 14 or whatever, they renamed the new version. Because that bike sold well, so they're probably going to come out with it. Uh, and the FJR is only available now going forward in the American market. Japan stopped, Euro stopped because of all the emissions. Uh, and they're pushing hard on that Yamaha GT Tracer now. So there's a huge FJR community. You know, every year they say, ah, this is the last one, last one, last one. The bike sells amazingly in the US, so I highly doubt it's the last one. It comes in one color. Well, one year it's gray, one year it's blue. Kind of like Kawasaki does. So, and it's cheap for them to produce because all the R&D is done, everything's done, they just keep churning them out. And for the price, I mean, like, probably 18 and a half, like I said, all in, about 20. It's a really formidable machine that's going to last you a long time. As is this. But this out the door, now you're going to be probably 27, 28. So you're talking about, I don't know, $8,000 difference? You think it's worth it? Depends on the riding you're doing, right? And if you are doing a lot of two-up, big cross-country trips, you're going to get the tour version with the pack and the adjustable suspension. Which is leading me back to maybe this really is a sport touring bike. Probably getting a lot of people aggravated saying that, am I? Let me know too. That's okay spurns the conversation. Looks like it's going to rain. Now, of the sport touring bikes, which is your favorite? I'll put up the FJR, the Concours, the Tracer, the BMW. You know, Moto Guzzi has a version too. It's a little different. Uh, I mean, I'll put that up for just so you can see it. Never, never ridden that. And then I'm sure number one dealer network and number two maintenance cost on that's not the most inexpensive. Uh, you know, dealer network also. Wherever there's Honda, there's usually Kawasaki and uh, Yamaha, BMW little more selective in where you find them. Um, one other one, the Ducati Multistrada. Some people view as a sport touring bike. I mean, some even go as far as saying that BMW GS is a sports touring bike. Um, I mean, now you're really getting sports touring plus off-road. I mean, is that a great all-rounder that does everything? Oh, yeah, no doubt. But, I mean, you can start throwing in things like the Africa Twin, too. So let's not even go there. This snowballs on and on and on. Could you do all of these things with any of them? Yes. But for purposes of how things are classified, what do you think? Knowing those definitions, going into the assignment, how do you define them? Here it is, right? You guys have been to the channel, saw it many times. You see how long the Goldwing is. Those sport tours are a lot more shorter, a lot less length. But the Goldwing front wheel isn't like raked out. It's more sport touring-esque. No rear trunk. I mean, it's got the bagger, the, uh, the pan ears, right? I mean, it's a hard argument not to say maybe it is a sport touring bike. And the foot position, I mean, here's the pegs, right? 
So your feet are under you like mid controls. You have the highway pegs. Now on the tour version with the tour pack and the uh, footboards, you are more stretched out. Feet in front of you. You got the big comfy seat with the uh, armrest for the passenger. So that is a true touring bike. So maybe this isn't a touring bike. Maybe it is a sport tour. <gasps> Did we just do something that's going to make everybody angry? Oh, no. I don't care. This bike is awesome. I bet you the FJR is awesome. The Kawasaki Concours, I bet you, is awesome. Uh, the BMW I've ridden, very good. Uh, so leave it in the comments below. What do you think?